The Battle of Yungay effectively destroyed the Peru-Bolivian Confederation created by Bolivian Marshal Andrés de Santa Cruz in 1836. On January 20, 1839, the alliance formed Chilean army led by Chilean General-in-Chief Manuel Bonas and force of Peruvians opposed to Santa Cruz decisively defeated the Confederate army commanded by Santa Cruz after six hours of combat in the battlefield of Yungay, in northern Peru, 200 kilometers north of Lima. The Chilean victory at Yungay effectively brought the Peru-Bolivian Confederation to an end, and Andres de Santa Cruz exiled himself in Guayaquil, Ecuador. The Peruvian government paid the debt contracted with Chile due to Chilean aid on the restoring campaign, also giving decorations and awards to Chilean and Peruvian officials. Also, Peruvian officers who served under the Confederation, among them Guillermo Miller, Mariano Necarchi, Luis José Orbegazo, Domingo Nieto, were banned from the Peruvian army. The victory of Yungay is remembered by the Chilean army with the hymn of Yungay, and by Peru with the creation of the Incarche Department. Prologue, led by Rear Admiral Manuel Blanco in Calada the first Chilean incursion into Peruvian territory. During the war between Chile and the Peru-Bolivian Confederation, this incursion was defeated at the Battle of Porcarpata by Andres de Santa Cruz forces. Blanco A.N. Santa Cruz signed the Treaty of Porcarpata on November 17, 1837. By signing this pact, Chile agreed to resume the commercial trade and the Confederation would recognize and pay the Chilean efforts in the Peruvian independence war. Upon Blanco and Calada's return, however, the Chilean parliament and the public opinion rejected the treaty and organized a second expedition of 5,400 soldiers under General Manuel Bonas, along with 600 expatriate Peruvians under General Agustin Gamara serving as reinforcements. Andres de Santa Cruz, the Bolivian marshal, responded immediately reinstating the hostilities. The second Chilean campaign had more success than the first one as the restoring army marched into Lima. After defeating Confederate General Orbegazo at the Battle of Porta de Aguias on August 21, 1838, also, the Chilean fleet secured sea domination in the Battle of Casma. Despite this victory, and forced by the lack of supplies and disease, the restoring army marched to Huacho in the North Peruvian Territory abandoning the capital city by November 1838, as news arrived indicating that Santa Cruz was closing with an outnumbering army to Lima. Afterwards, Santa Cruz entered into the city under popular ovation, then proceeded to follow Bun's forces. Both armies engaged in the Battle of Buen, on January 6, 1839, in the confluence of the Buen and the Santa Rivers, with indecisive results. Since Barnas continued marching north and Santa Cruz resumed the persecution seeking to deliver a final blow to the Chilean expedition to cement Confederation's dominance in the region. Thus, Santa Cruz advanced to capture and occupy Yungay, intending to cut the Chilean supply lines and strangle the Chilean expedition. His intention wasn't to obliterate the restoring army, but rather to force Barnas to sue for peace, and surrender to a superior Peruvian force. Bonas had other plans however, knowing that returning empty-handed was not an option after the failure of the previous force under Blanco in Calada. Contenders. Both armies had approximately 6,000 men, although the numbers favored slightly the side of the Confederation and Santa Cruz. The Chilean expedition, on the other hand, suffered the decimation of some battalions by plagues during its occupation of Lima, the capital of the North Peruvian Republic. Comparably equipped, the main difference was in the preparation of the troops, the knowledge of the terrain, and the obvious differences between invaders and defenders. Confederation Army The Confederacy Army was made up of veterans of internal battles from both Peru and Bolivia. It was generally supported by the population of Peru and possessed strong supply lines thanks to the site of the battle. 
Its commanding officer, General Andres de Santa Cruz, was regarded as a resourceful tactician and a capable leader. His army had about 6,000 men divided into three divisions, adding up nine infantry battalions and two cavalry regiments. Chilean Army The Chilean expedition had the experience of Gen. Manuel Bonas. On the other hand, it was not popular with the locals and was hampered due to disease, bad morale, and some less experienced units. This army of 5,400 soldiers was conformed by nine infantry battalions and three cavalry regiments grouped into four divisions. Preliminary moves Both armies marched under the rain, with the restoring force establishing near Tara from where it marches towards San Miguel, while Santa Cruz after detaining in Tahuas, occupied the town of Yungay on January 13. On the night of January 19, Santa Cruz sent Colonel Rodriguez Marjorinos to observe the Chilean positions. Besides, ordered to Bolivian Colonel Anselmo Quiras with 600 soldiers to assume positions on the Panda Azucar hilltop, while Colonel Fructuoso de la Peña advanced to the Punyan summit with another 200 soldiers. On January 20, with the sunrise, Gen Bonas marched with his four divisions to Yungay, whilst Santa Cruz deployed his army by the Incarche River, with Herrera's division on the right wing. In the middle was set the artillery and behind it the cavalry led by General Perez de Erdany. Finally, Moran's division was stationed on the left flank. Battlefield Both forces were separated by a short valley formed by the Santa River and the mountains, with the Punyan, Nkash and Panda Azucar Hill at the far end of this site. Behind these highs lies the deep Nkash Glen, followed by the Confederate trenches. The battle Confrontation on the Punyan and Pandarazukar Hills Bolness decided to start attacking the Punyan Confederate positions. In order to do so, the Aconcagui Battalion was dispatched to clear out the hill, who climbed and forced Pina's Confederate companies to retreat. After them, Bonus sent on the Portola, Valdivia and Wireless Battalions. At 900, a column of 400 soldiers under Geronimo Valenzuela and formed by companies of the Carampang, Santiago, Valparaiso and Cazadores de Peru battalions, were sent to the Pandarazucar Hill to assail Col. Quiras positions. The restoring troops began the slowly climbing of the hill slope under heavy Confederate fire, with the Carampang Battalion Company led only by a sergeant, a female officer, Candelaria Perez, because the unit had all its officers down, and with the other battalion companies decimated. Finally the Chilean soldiers reached the summit and bayoneted the Confederates out of the Punyan Hill, annihilating Quiris' forces. All of the Confederate soldiers and officers were killed, including Quiras himself. Valparaiso Battalion Sergeant Jose Alegria raised the Chilean flag on the Panda Azucar summit. Maneuvers on the Incash Glen Marshal Santa Cruz sent Carl de Hez's battalion to reinforce Quiras at Punyan Hill, marching through the Incash Glen, but in their route encountered and engaged the Colchagua battalion led by Carl. Uriola, forcing the Chileans to refold with a bayonet charge. Bonas ordered the Portola battalion to aid Uriola, maneuver that obliged the Bolivians to pull away from the Glen Herrera's positions with a third of its initial soldiers dead. With the Panda Azucar and Punyan Hills conquered, Gen. Bonas planned a frontal attack on Santa Cruz Army, arranged in a line of trenches on the opposite side of the Incash River. So, the Chilean forces converged on the river edge, and the Colchagua and Valdivia battalions were dispatched to engage the Confederate right guarded by Herrera's division, while the Portola, Cazadores do Peru and Wireless battalions were ordered to onset Col. Moran's division. The five-cannon battery of Col. Marcos Maturana allocated on the Punyan Heights began to shell and slowly to dismantle the Confederate trenches. Due to the bridge over the Incarche had been destroyed, the restoring forces had to descend to the river shore and march across it. When Bolton's troops crossed the river, the battle was joined on the entire front line, with the restoring army in the open and the Confederates firing upon them from the trenches. 
From this protected position, the Confederate divisions thwarted the attack. At 14.30, Gen. Pedro Bermudez drove his 3rd of Bolivia Battalion in a bayonet charge upon the Portola Battalion, which started to cede under the Bolivian pressure, breaking their lines. Following, the cavalry was sent to cut the Chilean retreat while the infantry forwarded from their protecting positions to attack the restoring troops in the open field. Decisive blow having witnessed the Chilean retreat, Gen. Thunus took command of the Valparaiso Battalion and crossed the Incarche height in Incol. Garcia's unit, likewise, the Santiago and Half Wireless Battalions strengthened the Chilean right wing, allowing the relieved units to gather up and resume the attack. A few Confederate battalions managed to return to their trenches. Perez de Erdeni's cavalry crossed the river and collided with Baquedano's Cazador the Caballo Cavalry Regiment. As a result of this clash, taking place near the Confederate line, Baquedano was wounded and forced to retreat, only to attack again now with five cavalry squadrons, making Perez de Erdeni to regroup with the Confederate infantry trying to retreat to their trench line. On a third massive charge, Baquedno broke Santa Cruz, left flank and the entire Confederate front collapsed, with both armies now engaging in the gap between the trenches and the water. The Confederates tried to resist but were outflanked and completely vanquished. The disbanded troops were persecuted by the Chilean cavalry and killed. According to Gonzalo Bunis, 277 Confederate troops were found dead on the road between Manco and Yungay, Santa Cruz, followed by his generals River Aguero, Serdner and Miller, left the battlefield around 1500. Aftermath This was a harsh defeat for the Peru-Bolivian Confederation. Santa Cruz had around 3,000 casualties, including two generals, nine colonels, 100 officers and 2,500 soldiers, equivalent to a 50% of its effective force. The restoring army lost one general, 39 officers and 622 soldiers. The Battle of Yungay brought as a consequence the end of the Peru-Bolivian Confederacy, with the Chilean expedition reoccupying Lima on April. On August 25, 1839 General Agustin Gamarra assumed the presidency of Peru, officially declaring the dissolution of the Confederation and the Union of the North and South Peru. Santa Cruz was exiled, first to Guayaquil, Ecuador, then to Chile and finally to Europe, where he died in Beauvoir, France, on September 25, 1865. He was 72.